Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 118 of the Arnivore Podcast. We're just going to call this recapped because I've been gone a week and we all know I went to SSK. So there will be knitting. There will be spinning. There will be a whole lot of miscellany including SSK purchases enabling whatever you want to call it. And then I'll be doing a shop update. So... If you don't want to hear about SSK, which I completely understand, just skip that portion in the middle. However, for the most part, it's enabling. So if you like enabling, you may want to watch it. Either way, show update at the end. Shop update. Shop update at the end, knitting and spinning and blah, blah, blah at the front. In the middle, we have miscellaneous. And you just get to see me all uh, hairy here. Well, not really hairy, but... Let's face it, I'm wearing pajama pants. You can't see it, but I'm wearing pajama pants. And I'm not going to put on regular pants to record. I did put on a bra. That's all you get. And before anyone asks, this is hand knit. It's out of Colinette Giotto. It is the Water Lily tank, I believe. It was an interweave. um, An interweave pattern. I believe I knit this while I was on the show. I can't remember. It's in my projects. I did the bigger size because I'm a bigger size lady and did not realize that there would be absolutely intense growth. So I went back and I did the smaller size, which would have been for like someone my mother's size or less, and ended up getting one that fit. So it's gorgeous. You have to wear a tank underneath it because of this. But it's comfy. It's airy because the Giotto is like a ribbony yarn. It's got a thicker strap, so it will cover bra straps. And it's basically the same thing on the back, except it's higher. There you go. This is the Water Lily tank top. (laughs) Before I... And I'm snuffly. See, I was sounding like Tom Waits on Sunday, yesterday, when I left Nashville. And I'm starting to sound better, but I'm still snuffly because I'm adjusting to the different altitudes, the different humidities, blah, 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 blah. But I don't have stoner eyes, which is awesome because usually that's what happens. When I switch altitudes and uh, areas of the country, I get these really, really red eyes. And pardon my crappy nails. I have not redone anything. I have not done anything to them. So they're chippy and they're grown out. You didn't come here to see me dress like a princess. You came here to watch my knitting. And after three cups of coffee, I've switched to Diet Coke. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon right now. It's about ten to three, actually. But I was caking yarn so I could show you some shop update stuff. I don't have all the shop update stuff, but hey, I have some of it, and enough of it is going to make you squee. But let's jump into knitting, because this is going to be a long show no matter what, and uh, if I end up sounding like Tom Waits again, whatever. So, knitting. I have two finished objects. This never happens. Well, it does happen, but it's been a while. I have two finished objects. I'm calling it finished even though it's not blocked. Or the ends aren't woven in. But I did finish the litmus lace shawl for my mother. Forget about that, Mom. It's her birthday present. Her birthday was July 9th. I called, I sang. Uh, and I didn't make it in time for the knit along, so whatever. I also had to cut it short by a few rows because I was running out of yarn. I have literally like the teeniest bit left. However, I still think it looks gorgeous. It is not blocked. Suck it up. This is out of the Ultraviolet Colorway by Highland Handmaids. Knit on a 3.5 millimeter needle. I don't know what that is, US. It has gorgeous lace patterns that go a little further out, but again, I told you I cut it a little short. I thought I had enough yardage, I did not, so I sucked it up. But it's very pretty, it's very soft. She's a tinier lady, so this is going to stretch even more. And it's going to be good for the winter. A Canadian winter, this will be good. And it's pretty. And it's pretty, so I have to block it. I have to have a blocking party. I'm not even going to lie to you, I haven't washed and thwacked half of my... Uh, spinning and yeah, you missed out earlier. My coke fell over. <laughs> I was very sad. My coke fell over. 
Luckily, it landed on the plastic bag and not the yarn or fiber. That will be coming up this chair next to me. Right here where my hand sits is where the giant pile of stuff stops. Just saying. So the other finished object, I finished in SSK. <laughs> And it's been a long time in the making because this is a second set of striped piece socks I dyed and it's a screwed up skein so you won't see these colors uh, come back. It's a prototype and I didn't get the colors I wanted and I had some problems with the yellow so I learned a lot from them but these striped piece socks as you can see the heel woo, it's a big old long foot that's what it is. These striped piece socks were knit for the hubby and I'm just noticing now that I inverted the colors by accident. Oh well. Oh no, they're right. I'm just confused. Okay, I've stared at them long enough. He can now put them on his feet. See, I missed him, so I worked on his socks and then I finished his socks. That's what happens. And my sorrowful tale of woe is that Monday morning, he flushed my wedding ring down the toilet. Except we didn't realize until 11 o'clock at night, because he was off and gone to work and hadn't realized that he knocked it anywhere, until he found the band precariously placed somewhere. And yeah, took apart the sink, went into the toilet. It's gone. My wedding ring is gone. After a little cry, I was okay, but yeah, that sucked. So that was my tale of woe. Then I had to turn around and get ready. So, those are my two finished objects. My works in progress are these. I was working on the Madame Raz stripey socks, which you've seen before. I was about here when I left, so I got past putting in the heel. And for the record, I had just barely finished the first sock without any afterthought heel on the other stripey socks which were knit on a US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needle because he's got big feet. Uh, so I knit an entire sock and put both of the afterthought heels in. That has been my, that's basically been all I've done this week. So I have this and I've put in the afterthought heel. Yeah. And it was the Madame Raz colorway that out of Knitter's Nightmare yarn. It's going to be a sock uh, for shows and stuff. It's the, uh, I believe this is the skeleton base, or it's the baddie base. I don't even remember. I think it's the skeleton. I'm pretty sure, because I usually do my fat bottoms in the skeleton. But it's, it's in the skeleton sock, or the baddie sock base. It's just going to be a show sock. I'm going to knit them for me, so that when I feel it's run its course, I will knit new socks and use those as show socks. <laughs> Just because I want people to be able to see the stripes and, and get to know them. So I'm going to have probably a pair of each of the stripes. Stripe widths and lengths. And it's in my, as you can see, this is really horrible fabric for any kind of pointy needle. But this bag came from Lettuce Knit in Toronto ages ago. Like, I mean ages ago. My sister-in-law got this for me for like my 22nd birthday, I think. 21st. It was one of my birthdays. I think it was my 22nd and it was the first project bag I ever had I do love it like the needles poke out but I still adore it it's got little pockets and it's made from an old handkerchief it's just I love it even though it's 90% useless I love it so and then in this bag which is my yarnivore bag and after being hassled at SSK I can honestly tell you there will be more yarnivore bags made I will probably do a bag I would probably also do a Knitter's Nightmare bag, just because what's marketing if you don't go all the way, right? Right. I started this, which is the Delirium sock. This one screwed up, which is why no one got it. And then it was like, well, it's screwed up, so I'll knit it. And I got through the cuff. And you know what? This is going to get pulled out because I started it on the US one and a half, and I don't... My hubby's not going to wear this sock, so really... Like, I mean, I'm going to be the one wearing this when it comes off, this sh like, when it's done being a show sock. Which it will probably be, because I can knit around, like, I personally can knit around 
the fuck ups. There's my explicit tag. See, just pulled it off the needles. But I didn't have any ones on me because apparently I was the least prepared human at SSK. That and I was like starting it Sunday morning. See, look at me. I'm just undoing the sock as I talk to you. Uh, started it Sunday morning. I couldn't find a one, whatever. But starting it on a 2.5 was the dumbest thing I've ever done because that's going to be way too loose, loose for me. I'm a moderate to loose knitter. I'm not like horrible. Or I'm a moderate to medium tightness of a knitter. I don't find I need to go down a size very often. Usually I'm, I, my gauge is pretty spot on. But I just know what I like when it comes to socks. So at this point in my life, yeah. It's going to be a show sock. Because I'll knit around the spots. But there you go. I just, I just undid it. It was a work in progress and now it's not. <laughs> now it's just a cake. I'll probably start it again. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Because I got a lot of dying to do this week. Because I know y'all are itching for the update. So that was my uh, works in progress as far as knitting. For spinning, I finished the Vulpus Vulpus. It's not washed with wax, so don't get any ideas here. This is four ounces of Targi in the Vulpus Vulpus colorway. I was doing a lot of long draw trying with this and um, just trying to get my tensions better. So it's a thick and thin-ish. It's going to be a sport weight. Well, right now it's a heavy fingering to sport weight in most spots. And I think it's going to plump when I wash it, thwack it. So I'm probably going to end up with a sport to worsted on it. I hate doing this. Let's see if I can get it to look right. Yeah, I know you love watching me do this with my double chin. It's just so awesome. Such a sexy beast. Well, actually, I am, but not in that particular uh, view. So there you have it. It's not plied to the best of its ability, and yeah, I think that was a petri fur. But Vulpus Vulpus was spin was spun. I so I spun it long draw for the most part, and then I did some inchworming. I always default to inchworming, so let's not even pretend ourselves. I have not counted the yardage yet. Like, seriously, came off... I applied it at 3 in the morning Tuesday to get ready for Wednesday, because I needed my bobbins clean to take a, ch a class with JC Boggs. So, really cleaned off the bobbins. I love it. It's very soft. I'll probably knit it into a cowl or something. I don't know. I like that there is no real yellow. It's very orangey. Right, you can see my crappy spinning. My crappy spinning job. It's not crappy, it's just, it's not up to my usual par, so be it. There's oranges and greens and blues and grays and blacks and browns. It's a gorgeous colorway and it's a gorgeous fiber to spin with. I just, yeah, there you have it. The other thing I've been spinning Let's just flip into enabling here. <clears throat> I've got OSSK. That's all it says in my notes. Is like if you look, it says OSSK. OSSK. Hell yeah! Let's just let's rock into this. And yes, I'm congested. I'm sorry. It's the last time I apologize for it. I can breathe. It's not a big deal. So. I fell down with boom real hard at SSK. And it all started with something that wasn't even like for sale there. Uh, Daisy, Daisy Knits a Lot, I believe, uh, had messaged on the SSK boards in the I'm Bringing Stuff to Sell selection that she had a Jenkins she wanted to sell. You have a Jenkins Turkish drop spindle you want to sell. And I am recently obsessed with Jenkins Turkish drop spindles. Thanks to my mother-in-law. And it's a size I don't have. I have a 25 or 20 gram. I have the middle one. I have the middle one. That's what hubby bought me for my birthday. So this is a 2010 Purple Heart Jenkins. 1.86 ounces. 53 grams. And it's gorgeous. So I had to get that. 
I just, I couldn't say no. So the purple heart, this is the swan. So I can spend some sport weight when I'm, when I'm in the mood to spend sport weight. It's just gorgeous. And I like drop spindling. It's something I can do while I'm just standing around. It's, it requires less thought than my wheel, although I'm always going to ply on my wheel, because after trying to ply off of the other ones, yeah, no, not happening. And then my other enabling came from the Knitting and Color booth, and I have the tag around here somewhere. This is a wee, very wee, like seriously, look at, compared to my hand, it is minuscule. Turkish Drop Spindle by Subterranean Woodworks, which is Knitting and Color's husband. And I saw it, and I loved it, and I needed it, so I got it. <laughs> That's the long and short of it. I, I had a moment, and it's all Becca's fault, and she doesn't even know it. So I started spinning a puny, because apparently I fell on the puny bandwagon when I wasn't looking. It's probably the only punies I will ever have or ever spin, but I needed something small to spin on it, because I didn't want to bust out a four-ounce braid. That was just not happening on that. So, backtrack to the story. It's all Becca's fault because I said I'd pick her up something. So I picked her up this. She wanted a bat. I said, what do you want from SSK? Because I love my homegirl. And when you love your homegirl, you're willing to get them any kind of present they want. And she said she wanted a bat. So these are gorgeous greens and purples. And I got this and everyone else was like, where did that bat go? And I just sat there going... Until I said, I got it. Uh, it's got some Stellina to it. It's got some Firestar. Firestar, that's what it is. It's not Stellina, it's Firestar. Not too much, though. Because, you know, too much is too much. But it's it's big, it's fluffy. I'm not unwrapping it. That's Becca's job. It's 3.7 ounces of the Monster Mash colorway with Angelina, oh, there is Angelina, Angelina Bamboo, Falkland, Firestar Merino, and Merino Fleece by Nitty and Color. I love Nitty and Color. I'd already spun some of her stuff, so I knew I was doomed. So I went in, and her bats were right at the front, so I was looking at the bats, and this has traveled in my suitcase. It was far prettier the first day I got it. But so I picked up this bat because I needed to find something without alpaca. So I found this. And it's a gorgeous, fluffy, soft, huge monster of a bat. And I was like, yoink, this is for Becca. So I grabbed it for Becca. And as I was waiting in line, I saw <coughs> the drop spindle. So without getting out of line, I grabbed the drop spindle the Turkish by her husband and look at the top look at the inlays on this it's even on the bottom it's gorgeous um, it's 0.5 of an ounce I believe or something like that again I don't know where I put the tag if I was a good podcaster I would have brought the tag maybe it's in with my poonies let me get to my poonies oh yeah I have another work in progress I forgot about it <laughs> that's because I piled everything on the chair I also did work a little bit, and I fixed the I fixed the straps before I left to be the way I wanted them, which is absolutely nothing to decor noir. Like I mean, it's an, an excellent bag. I just I'm neurotic. I worked on the Georgia on my mind sock. I finished the gusset decreases. Uh, there you go. See, it's really good for heavily variegated yarns. Just looks it works perfectly. Finish the, the heel, turn the heel, finish the gusset, and now I'm on the foot. And it's on US 1 2.25 Chagu needles. Which are still not my favorite, like some podcasters we may know named Steven. But I like them. Like, I mean, it's not that I don't like them. It's just they're not my personal favorite. I will knit with them. I will knit with them over um, most other needles. <laughs> But they're still not my favorite. So that I did get some work on. Primarily on the shuttle. Oh, here we go. Subterranean Woodworks. This is the card for the little Turkish. It's a small 0.56 of an ounce, 15 grams. Sapel maple and a maple shaft. It is amazing. I love it. But because I was getting that, 
It's like, what am I going to spit on it? I can't spit any of these four ounce braids I have. That would just be not right. This is the one I'm spinning from, so I'll put it over here. So I needed to get me some poonies. These poonies have traveled far and wide in my bag. So these are the poonies. There's going to be a reflection. Suck it up. I'm not taking them out of the bag. These are really hard to navigate back into the bag, but they're gorgeous. It is called Dance Party 2.7 ounces. It's got <clears throat> Angelina Bamboo Falkland Firestar Milk Fiber Merino. I'll take one out. I've never spun a puny. I, I get the allure. I'm never going to buy punies again. Like, I mean, it's 22 bucks. 2.7 ounces and I get it because I played on a blending board and I made my own puny and I know how much work goes into these I just it happens that uh, it's not my it's not my deal however I do love saying the word puny so as you can see it's just a gorgeous it's like a really tight row log and you can spin it from the folder you can spin it um, worsted or woolen long draw either way like that's naturally the preparation for it I'm still inchworming Screw anyone who tells you you have to uh, spin or knit a certain way. That is total BS. And this is the one I'm spinning on. I elongated it because I found that it was too compact for my liking. Again, he had another reason. I'm not the biggest fan of punies. They're fun. Don't get me wrong. They're ultra fun. And if you like them, they're really good for drop spindling. And if you like spinning them, more power to you. I do love them, it's just, it's not my favorite prep. I would much rather do uh, roll logs or drum carded bats, but having said that, it was nitty in color, so I felt no shame, and I love her stuff, and I love her colors, and yeah, so I bought ponies. Ponies. Can I say it one more? Pony. There you go. And someone, I forget who mistook it and thought it was penises. That was perfect. I'm not even going to lie. Perfect. So as I said, there was the tasting room. Ah! Don't hurt my bat. There was the tasting room. So I went and I tasted many things. And uh, in the tasting room there was the mad batter. Now I have the Louette Junior. And this is it really spread out. But I did make a bat. On the mad batter. And it came out quite nicely. I just suck at rolling these things back up. I'm used to my little guys. Fold, fold, roll. And uh, I waited till the second night, and Mama Linneman was there and helped me uh, make my bat. So I made a bat, fell in love with the Mad Batter. Not gonna lie, I may save up and get one for the shop, and then start doing some really sweet, wicked bats. Because everybody was trying to get me to buy it there anyway they were like no you need one and then I made a puny but my puny as you can see is very elongated um, and kind of like an earthworm that just ate food but that was fun I just I wasn't hundred percent sold on the blending board I probably still am not it's a lot of work and um, I just much rather spend it spinning knitting or dying that's all The tasting room was awesome. A lot of people ended up like freaking out over e-spinners because of it. Or people decided what wheels they wanted to own. Lots of drop spindle purchases going on after that. Uh, it was just, it was the best idea ever. Except I could only be in there for a certain amount of time because I was like, I will buy one of everything if I don't get out of here. And I'm pretty sure that's the problem everyone else had. So, there you have it. Now, aside from the awesomeness that was the weekend and hanging out with people and making new friends and meeting everybody, and meeting everybody was so much fun. Like, some of the people, I had no idea who they were. Which is fine. Like, I mean, none of us knew who each other was until we looked at our little tags anyway. But it was so awesome to be able to put a face to a name. Like, Melanie, Four Kitties Have I, I've spoken with her on Plurk, or not on Plurk, but on, um, in Ravelry on PMs and whatnot, and it was just amazing to finally meet her, because she is so awesome. And Rista1313, 
Feasibel, like everybody I met was just so sweet. And going out for supper, you'll hear about everything from everybody else. I'm just going to touch on some things. I did do a breakout session on how to process fleece. Uh, it was well attended. I thought everyone liked it. That was my goal. I just wanted people to, like, learn things. So, and I think I may have turned some people into some fleece processors. So that's a win for me. At the JC Boggs class, I learned some really awesome new spitting techniques. And I learned what some of the spitting I do already is called. <laughs> I did not know. So, that was really cool. It was very educational. Back to the enabling. I was part of a group that was psychotically obsessed. Psychotically. I'm not even going to lie to you. We, like, who, Netta and SDRD was like, this is like watching the planning of the Battle of Normandy. We were on our game. We got up early, we hit Starbucks, and then we sat and waited for the market to open. And you know why I sat and waited to the market for the market to open? I wanted this bag. This is the Fat Squirrel SSK 2013 bag. And I wanted one. I was willing to wake up at 5.45 in the morning after going to bed at like 2.30 to get this damn bag. And it's completely worth it. Like, I mean, you know the fat squirrel quality. I don't need to sell you on it. And I got to pick the one with the purple, the more purple, because you could get the orange ones with like these orange designs as the centered ones. But I got the purple. So I was even more happy because I wanted the purple one. And it's got the purple... Let me just say purple a few more times. It's got the purple embroidery floss. I just... Yeah. I love Amy Beth. Amy Beth knows. We know. There was, there was some serious love going on there. And we beelined, and I got the bag. <laughs> I shouldn't just get that bag, though. Because how often do you get to, like, storm Amy Beth's booth and just go yoink, 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 yoink? I had to stop myself. I'm not even going to lie to you. I had to stop myself and think about it. And then I got the large wedge with the bird. Because I love birds. So it's got that bird. And then it's got some ch cool birds. Like, I like this little guy and this guy. Like, I'm down. I'm down with all this birdage. And, again, these just have, like, the plain canvas inside. But I love the plain canvas inside. And the coordinating zippers. My God. My God. Like, I love Amy Beth to begin with. But I... Mm. Mm. And then, this this bag has a story. Can you see it's the Frida Kahlo bag? I've also got her head down here. Just down over here. Here she is. She's holding her monkey. It's got her quote on it. Peace para el tango que las quiero a las pa voler. I don't know which quote. I don't speak Spanish. I'm sorry. But it is gorgeous. It's freaking gorgeous. It's the Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo! And when she had done the boppy bippy, bippity boppity boo, whatever, the thing, you know, you prop your kid up and they can sit or you can hold it across your waist so you can breastfeed. Um, she had made one for a friend in this fabric and I was like, are you going to do bags in that fabric? Because I will, I will grow a unibrow and show you my breasts. I, I, I grow a unibrow and give you, give you the full goods. And sadly, there wasn't enough fabric at the time. But she had enough fabric to make a bag. And I got the bag! Not only that, but she gave it to me because she's so awesome. I got the Frida Kahlo bag! This was like the golden moment. I made everybody look at it and ooh and ah at it. And like, yeah. It's a small wedge. And the small wedge is still huge. Amy Beth doesn't do anything low. <laughs> She's such a personality, and I adore her. Seriously. Seriously. And so that was, that was market storming. That was what I went in for. There were three things I had on my plate to go into the market. Like, three things. Like, and, of course, during the Battle of Normandy, 
like yarn storming because we were the first in line so we were like we I will go here and do this I will go here and do this we danced in line like we had fun like it wasn't we just plopped our asses down and waited or formed a line we were knitting and laughing and listening to music and Patricia Skyhag 80 83 I don't know, Sky Hag, I don't know her her numbers, but she was there, and she is the most amazing human being ever. She's got a laugh, and uh, just saying, enormous penis. She brought us the enormous penis, and we love her for it. But I had three things I wanted to go in for. The fat squirrel bag fell down, went boom. Desert Vista Dye Works, and everything is covered in fire stars. Cause I put it near my bat, and I put a lot of Firestar in that. I'm not even. I was slightly tipsy from going to the Midtown Tavern. If you're in Nashville, go to the Midtown Tavern. It is amazing. I got the Dia de los Muertos Desert Vista. This was like my goal. This was like my hardcore goal. Cause let's face it, Dia de los Muertos and me, we need to be like this. And it's in the Viso, Viso, Viso. I can't say it right. I'm sorry, Susan. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, finger weight, approximately 462 yards of awesome. And I may be doing it along with that Do it at some point with, with a few people. Hi, Petrie, come on. No? I let her in because she's having a mommy moment. Come on. Y'all get your Petri fix. I know you've been missing her. She is doing quite well now. She had a little flare up before I left, but as you can see, happy pee. She's purring, you can't tell. Kitty stash, kitty mustache, kitty mustache. Okay, can you go down now? Knock my pony. She she hit my pony. That just sounds bad. The other thing I wanted, uh, which I have never had before, and was like, uh, it was one of my things I really wanted to try was fiber optic yarns. And there's going to be a lot of crinkling, so suck it up. So I went to... See, I threw everything in my space saver bag, which is probably wise. Went to fiber optic yarns. I've never had any. I've never ordered any. Clearly the last one to know on that factor. So I, after I got the fat squirrel, she was right across the way, so I just turned around and was like... like the gradients were going like crazy anyway. And Karen was there. <laughs> like, everybody was enabling everybody else. You'd, you'd hem or you'd haw, and then you were doomed. So first I picked up this, and it was the last one. I had to go up to, uh, is it Kimber? Kimber owns Fiber Optic. I had to go up to her and be like, can I have the one that's zip-tagged to the thing? She passed me a, a pair of snips. She's like, just bring the snips back. <laughs> like, okay. So I went and I got the Onyx to Crimson gradient, which has a lot of reflection. I'm not pulling it up, so you're just going to have to deal with that. And so I had that, and I was hemming and hawing over which one I should get elsewise. And I didn't want anything with yellow, because I don't do a lot of yellow. And you'll see that I already had some yellow, or I got some yellow. And Karen pulled this out. She goes, I have this one, but you need it. <laughs> so I bought it. It's the Something Wicked Gradient, so it goes from a purpley blue to a deep dark blue to a green. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Actually, thanks, but you, you know what I mean. It was the last one, too, so. And then I beelined it out of there. There was, like, nothing left <laughs> when we were out of there. Which was awesome. And in our uh, goodie bags, we got these wicked goodie bags. And you could choose the yarn. I got the Into the World Don't Blank colorway on BFL. 
awesome. That was in my bag, so I'll show it to you there. Uh, that was in the bag. And the other thing that was in our, our goodie bags was this. Which is by another crafty girl who's who I also visited. She was also one of the ones we were plotting on. And this is called New Friends and Happy Tears. Shades of green. It's darker than it's showing up on here, but everything's darker than showing up on here because I'm recording in the afternoon. Uh, so that was the, in the goodie bag. I got a yarn, I got a fiber, I got the t-shirt, I got the, uh, seriously, I branded myself something fierce with SSK goodies. It's like, can you tell I'm an SSK hoo So, and I went to another crafty girl, and this is the bestie. Oh, you got hit with a Coke. It's okay, it's in plastic, but it smeared the little bestie thing. It says, uh, you're my bestie, two colorways meant for each other. Perfect for mismatched socks, something for with stripes, toys, or you can keep one and give the other to your bestie. 200 yards each. And I saw, like, there were, like, people were going nuts for the besties. And so I looked at them. I was contemplating with the names. I was like, okay, Circus Mice. Uh, and I was talking myself out of most of them because some of them had yellow and pink together and I don't do yellow and I don't like to do much pink. Much pink. It was just too pink. Too pink with the yellow. Which if you're a pink yellow person is perfect, but it wasn't for me. So I was talking myself out of these because I was trying to be good. And then I just saw the first half of this. If you can, let me just, the first half of this bestie. Can you see it? Boom King. Boom King. So I pull it out. It's Boom King in business time. <laughs> and I'm obsessed with the Flight of the Concords and Kiwis, so I had to get it. So here's Boom King and business time. And they are perfect. Like, I know this one has pink in it, but it's just perfect pink. Like, if you don't have a bestie from another crafty girl, you are missing out. And there's a Portal 2 one. I almost picked it up for Becca, but she just said she wanted a bat, so... That's her deal. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I got this, and I was doing a little dance. And you got this white SSK um, reusable tote bag to put everything in. And my tote bag was about three quarters of the way full. You'd think three quarters of the way full would be acceptable. No. There are people walking around the market, they just would say, that is not full enough. You can't stop now. And that happened to me, and it was Amy Froggy Monkey. She comes up, she goes, there's still room in your bag. Yeah. So then I turned into the Spotted Circus booth, and I've decided that I'm going to become their groupie, and, um, yeah, turned into the Spotted Circus booth. I came out with another bag, and I said to Amy, is this enough? Okay, okay. I still went back in. I went into the market three times, and I really should have stayed out of there. So, I went into the Spotted Circus booth, and the first thing I saw was this. And I enabled someone to go back and get it. Oh, Jess. Jess went back in and got it. Amy was going to get it, but there was Firestar, so she talked herself out of it. And it, during the time she talked herself out of it, Jess went in and got it. This is 70% BFL, 30% Firestar. This is Spotted Circus, Alpacas and Lamas, SpottedCircus.com. Seriously, pause me right now, go there, and spend a shitload of money. I'm not even lying to you, because I love it that much. Seriously, seriously. This could be problematic. I'm going to have to go buy more stuff, and I, I have a bag of stuff. You see the problem. This is gorgeous. Look at this colorway. Look at it. I saw it. I touched it. The BFL is perfect, and the mixture of the Firestar just adds, oh my god. And the oranges, and there's like no yellow in here, there's oranges, purples, and this greeny, it's a yellowy green, but I, it's acceptable, and I just, oh my god, and I felt it, and it had to be mine. So I grabbed it. I grabbed it, and I was fine. And then... 
because I'm always looking for pre-dyed stuff that I can drum card together because I like doing that. They had little racks. And there's going to be a lot of crinkling right now. They had little racks. And I've never played with Texel. Never. But they had like little bowls beside each of the fibers so you could play with them. I played with the Texel. I fell in love with the Texel. Because it feels like a Rambouillet mixed with a Polworth. Like, it's hard to explain. But, oh my god, I wanted the Texel. So they had two ounces of, like, neon Texel for eight bucks. Yoink. And then they had these gorgeous colors. They're deep blue, purple, and this wine burgundy. And a Texel Cotswold. Yeah, that had to come home with me. And... And, see, I didn't stop there. I could have, but I didn't. I went worse. I had just done a class in how to prep fiber, process fiber, and whatnot. And I explained many things during my class. Pull out some of the, some second cuts for anyone who, who wonders. But you can spin those in for art yarn. And if they're dyed, you can just save them and spin them in for if you want to do art yarn. The, I had used Jacob, and they had a bunch of dyed Jacob lots. It's hard to find Jacob that is pre-processed, that is not a natural color. It's even harder to find Jacob that is dyed. You can't get it in a commercial yarn because there aren't enough Jacob sheep. So every time I see Jacob, I'm like, yoink. They had a bag of dyed green and blue and teal Jacob locks. Yeah. I may have encouraged like anyone who is around me to buy them. I think I sold like four bags of Jacob locks for them, not counting mine. Because I was just like, no, you need this. And because I bought so much, they gave me some cocoons. And I've never done cocoons. So this should be fun, because I know that you unwind the cocoon and it's one long, um, one long fiber. So I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with cocoons, but it's dyed and it's so pretty, like it's purple. And then I like, just grab one and there were so many people in there I couldn't, so I yelled up across to Amy and was like, can you throw me one? She's like, what color? They've got blah, 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 purple. Purple! So that's how I ended up with that. Not even gonna lie to you. The Spotted Circus, I am their new bitch. This is not the last time you've seen Spot. It won't be. And I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I fell down and went boom hard at the Spotted Circus. It was one of those epic fall downs. And there were door prizes. At SSK, you put your name into these different bags for different things. And they had a Spotted Circus. Go figure. So I put like most of my. <laughs> tickets in the Spotted Circus for the 50% I'll pack a 30% Polworth, 20% Silk, which does have yellow. It's a yellow and purple with oranges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this as one ply, I'm going to spin this as one ply, and then I'm going to ply the little buggers together. And it's going to be balls. So I got 4.4 ounces of this, and I got 4 ounces of this. So, oh my god. So, speaking of door prizes, like, I mean, we got a lot of goodies. We did get a lot of goodies. I also got my first pair ever of sock blockers, and it is emblazoned with the SSK logo, which you can't see right now. The, um, the paper on the back peels off. I didn't want to do it until I got home. Let me just see if I can get this paper off right now. I don't know where they had them done, but it is the most epic idea. Because I've never had sock bloggers. Now I can, like, use them on the show. Seriously, I don't block socks. Unless they're for gifts. Like Christmas gifts or something. There we go. That stuff is really on there. It's just pulling off the backing. Pulling it off, pulling it off. There you go. Now you can kind of see the SSK 2013 logo. It's adorable. 
What is that? Oh my god, I can put my freshly finished hubby socks on here. It'll be too short for them, but I can put them on and be like, oh, classy podcaster. Sock blocker sock! Because he has huge feet. Oh my god, sock blocker sock! So we got sock blockers, and we got a cute little bag. Seriously, you're going to see so many podcasters mention all the goodies. Just assume I have the exact same set of goodies. Oh my god, I love the sock blockers. So, yeah. The other thing I won, because, you know, I've been saying I need sweater project bags. Bling Your String sent one of her, um, are these the, oh, they've got a special name. It's got dragonflies. How coheed and camera is this? A, it's purple with a little bit of pink, but B, it's got dragonflies. I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I just, I, burr, 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 I needed it. And it's got a hand hammered pull tag. This is SSK 2013. And a set of stitch markers, which are gorgeous. And they're the non snag kind, which just made me so happy. There's a dragonfly and they're purple. And it's got this thingy that you can use as a clip, so you can carry it like a purse. If you've seen the Fats Girl, she has one, and she did a whole review of it. But what's even better is on the inside, there's this hardcore magnet. Keeps a Notions purse. Oh my god. Notions purse. So you can magnetize it into it, so you don't lose any of the shit you need. Just like, oh my god. How awesome is this? And it's got a flat bottom. Because we all love the flat bottoms. Looks like she forgot to finish mine at the bottom. Whatever. I still love it. I still think it's amazing. It's huge. It's big. It's awesome. And I won it. <laughs> I love door prizes. <sighs> I won one each night, so I felt like a rock star. I wasn't one of those people who won eight. Sandykins just saying. I don't think she won eight, but she won a shit ton. And more power to her, because she came from, like, Sweden or something. And then, wow, this show is going to be an hour long. <laughs> I had left the market. I had left it. And Diane said, don't let me go back in there. And I said, I will sit on your ass and make sure you don't move. But I was doing something, and she snuck in. She snuck in, and she bought a lefty, and then decided, she went upstairs, back upstairs, and looked on her iPad to see that it required an exceptionally tiny needle. And there was no way she was going to knit all that on a tiny needle. Not happening. So, she went back. And I followed her to make sure she didn't do anything stupid. And in following her to make sure she did nothing stupid, our knit-along was born, and it is the Brickless by Martina Bem. Which goes from now until August 28th, which is the day before my hubby's birthday. The Brickless, if you haven't seen it, and that's what it looks like. By Martina Bem. So, start your engines now. I actually have, like, dyeing work to do. But when I'm done that, I will be caking this. That's right. It was perfectly fine until she went back into the damn market. We had seen... Who was knitting on it? Someone was knitting on it at the table, and it only requires one skein of Yowza, and so we went back. And she got a skein. And I was hemming and hawing, because I had just hemorrhaged money quite severely, and I was like, oh, but this is so pretty. It's called Shining City, and this yellow here isn't actually yellow, it's a greeny yellow. It's called Shining City, it's got all these beautiful purples and grays, and it just pops like the dickens. And oh my god, one skein to do the brickless. So I bought it, and by the time we were back upstairs, the, the knit along was born. I will be caking this tonight and casting on, because I needed a four, so I needed to come home and do it. This is the Shining City colorway in the Yowza Wetterskin 100% Superwash Merino Wool, hand painted, approximately 560 yards. That's so soft and squishy. 
I will open a thread. I will be offering a stripey sock yarn as a prize, so remember to post your pictures of your finished bricklaces. It doesn't have to be out of Miss Babs, but dang it, it's a good reason to order it, and it's so soft and squishy. It's 38 bucks. Like, you can have a $38 sport weight yarn shawl in gorgeous colors. Why not? That's the cheapest friggin' shawl I've heard of in a good while. That's sport weight, and it's going to be so good for winter. I was heavily enabled. The yarn fumes were getting to me. The heat and humidity got me. And I was dead. I was dead. I was lost. So now here's the shop update. If you've been fast forwarding through everything else, here's the shop update. Welcome to the shop update. The shop update will either be on Friday or Saturday. I haven't decided yet because I still have to warp and dye a bunch of stuff. And uh, you're just going to see what is already ready. The update theme this uh, particular go-round is uh, vintage consoles in the fat bottom stripe. So you've got your Save the Princess, which is Link. There will be a Mario, there, etc., etc. You get the drift. The previews will go up the day before, as always. Uh, or the morning of, so that you can preview what you want before you buy it. The other theme is the Big Lebowski, which had to be done. It just had to. So, it will be either Friday or Saturday. Watch the Knitter's Nightmare Ravelry board because I always post when it's going to be on there anyway. But I'll show you the colorways that have been done so far. The rug is not dyed. The rug is coming. The rug will be a four stripe. These are three stripes. And this is a uh, very, it's a heavily variegated. It's on my new base, which is Iron Maiden or a knight in the Iron Maiden, 75% BFL, 25% nylon. You get more yardage, it's a 464 yard skein, whereas the others are usually 400, except for the platinum, which is about 415. Uh, I was going somewhere with this. Big Lebowski, so this is the heavily variegated, it's got a dark green, a light green, and a brown gray green. It's of course after Walter called I Don't Roll on Shabbos. It was made an honorary Jew during SSK. I'm an Epicurean Jew. And I can also be a Shiksa, which was awesome. It was my goal in, in like early university. This is the bowling alley. So you've got some really, it's, it's an orange. It's a strange orange. It's a fruity orange, or a vegetably orange, which was in the bowling alley. You've got your um, taupe of the surroundings and the blue of the stars on the side. So the bowling alley, we've got and you kind of have to be hardcore into the Big Lebowski to get this, but it's Autobahn. I'll be doing these probably on another base too, like there will be two bases for these. This is Autobahn, which is purple, red, and black, like the album cover. Because everybody ne needs Autobahn and Nihilists. And this is Nice Marmot. Nice Marmot. So you've got the pink of the Marmot, a black, and a shaded gray. There's also the pink of the Mr. Bubble that is right behind his head when they drop the marmot, which is actually a ferret, into the bathtub. So pink, gray, and black for the marmot. Nice marmot. And there will also be the rug. That is the shop update. That is coming up. Big Lebowski. Uh, vintage consoles and there will be fiber and it will be places I want to visit so our 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 our, our Roxanne won and uh, so did so enticing so I will be contacting them to see what fibers they want I have not dyed those up they will also be up on the website for a preview either the morning of or the night before just watch the group I post everything on the group and then I plurk it and then I tweet it and then I do everything with it so if you're Clerking, tweeting, Instagramming, etc. You should have a vague notion 
of when stuff happens as well as just the the knitter's nightmare board which is the best place to go to find out everything this mu the, this music's week this week's music is Sleater Kinney I bought some in Chicago and it has rekindled my love of Sleater Kinney if you have not heard of Sleater Kinney they were a big band during the 90s and early 2000s they're a, f a female group they were part of the riot girl movement but they aren't really screamy Carrie Brownstein who is the guitarist is an amazing guitarist so they tend to rock hard I recommend checking them out there will be a few things in the show notes they broke up tragically but I still believe you should own all of the albums and enjoy all of the albums they I have never been wronged by Sleater Kinney having said that that is everything I've got for you this week and I'm losing my voice see I'm turning into Tom Waits again and I need another coke so I'm not even gonna lie to you I'm, t I'm thirsty I'm sweaty and I need a new coke I'm Blue Ruin on Ravelry, we shoot stars on Plurk, Sadie Ruin on Twitter and Instagram. Come join the Arniverous group. It's where you have to be a member in order to win stuff like the Brickless uh, thingy majig. I can't wait to cast that on. I really can't. And that's a joint knit along with knittables. And I think that's everything. I will be recording next week. I'm probably going to move the recording schedule. I'll post that on Yarnivore, the podcast uh, group. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Week? Weekend. I hope everyone has a wonderful week, and I will see you soon. Happy knitting and spinning.